All right, welcome to yet another code tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use React Query with GraphQL queries. And I think many of you out there, when you think of GraphQL in a React application, you probably think, ah, Apollo. Almost everyone is using Apollo when it comes down to GraphQL. But the thing is that you don't need to use Apollo if you don't want to use it. Apollo is quite a large library, so if you don't use all the functionality there, it can be better to use something else. React Query is something that's called agnostic, meaning that it doesn't care how you, how you get your data. You just need to have a, what they call a denable function, an, an async function. So we can use GraphQL and we can give React Query an async function that will return the data from that function. So that's what I'm going to show you here. And there's many ways of doing this. And I'm going to use something that's called GraphQL request. And that's a small library that I use so that I can parse my GraphQL queries in, a, in an easy way. You don't need to use that either, but then you have to write your GraphQL in a much more complex way. This way, by using GraphQL request in combination with GraphQL tag, it, it's easy to write your queries. You can write your queries as you do in Apollo with a template literal string. So I have a little installation here. You can see I'm just rendering out GraphQL with React query. So that's my main app.js file here. So that one, yeah, it's just like this now. And as you can see, I'm using the React script 17 point something. And then you don't need to import React up here. So it's just enough to have this one here. But if we look in the package.json, you can see that I've installed GraphQL. I've installed GraphQL request and the GraphQL tag. And then I have React, of course. So these three here and also React query, and I'm using the beta now. This is version three of React Query. It's gonna be released probably in any day now. So that's what I'm using here to show you because there's a little bit of difference in how you do stuff in React Query three, especially when it comes down to, especially when it comes down to initialize it with a provider and stuff like that. But I have a video on this also on my YouTube channel. So I've already set this up for us in the index.js file. You can see in React Query version three, we import the query client, the query client provider from React Query. And then we create a query client with new query client. So that will give us the query client. And then we have the query client provider that we give the client that we created here. This is almost the same as with Apollo also, because you have to wrap your application with a provider to be able to use Apollo. And they're changing to this also in the React Query now. So you have to wrap your application high up in the hierarchy with a query client provider. So that's what I've done here. And I also provided a link down below this video to the GitHub repository with the finished code. And also don't forget, if you like my videos, please, 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 please support me by subscribing to my channel. All right, so let's get started. This is the setup that I'm using. And if you want to learn more about setting React Query 3 up, you can check out another video that I have on this topic in my channel. Okay, so let's get started in the app.js file. So the first thing that I'm gonna do here is actually create my queries. And I'm gonna use a GraphQL endpoint that I found when I Googled for free GraphQL APIs. And it's an endpoint that grabs all the countries in the world and different information about the countries. So that's what I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna create the queries here in the app.js file. And then I'm gonna create a custom hook for grabbing this data with React Query. I'm gonna import G QL from GraphQL tag. And that's the one that I use to parse my GraphQL queries. I create a new const and the queries name is gonna be get underscore countries equals GQ, GQL. As always, I have trouble saying some stuff here, but GQL. And then I have double backticks because this is a template literal, and inside of here we can write our GraphQL query. And for this endpoint, it's gonna be simple. We have the query, and then I'm gonna ask for the countries. I have the country code and the name. So that's what I'm gonna grab from that one. And also I want a single query. I want to query a single country to show you also. So I create another const that's called get underscore country and all capital letters, GQL, double back ticks, and then I have my query. 
and query. The reason I want to show you this one also is because we have a, a, a variable in our query here. So this query is going to have a variable that I call code. It's going to be of the type ID like this. And then we ask for the country. We use that variable. This query that's called country require you to provide a code. And that's the one that we send in here. So the code is going to be our variable that's called code. All right. And then I'm just going to ask for the name in this one. So that's our GraphQL queries that I created here. I could create all the logic here in the app itself, but I think I have a lot of videos on how you create custom hooks and stuff like that. So I won't go through it here. I will instantly move to create a custom hook for this one. So that's what I'm going to do. So I create a new file in the SRC folder that I call use gql query.js and I move inside of that file. First, I'm going to import use query from React dash query, something like that. And then I need some stuff from the GraphQL request library. I'm going to import something that's called GraphQL client. We, not, we don't need it actually now when we don't use a variable because the first query is uh, the one that we created for all the countries. We don't have a variable for that one, but I'm importing this one for later use. GraphQL client and request from GraphQL request, like that, All right? Then I export a const and I call my custom hook use gql query, just as the file name, I like to name them the same. I think that will create less confusion if you name them the same. And as this is the hook that is based on the use query from React query, we need to have some parameters for this one. So I want to give this one the key, just as we do with the use query hook and also the query, of course, and also the variables and the config. If we want to configure something in React Query, you can do that in an object. And I set this one to an empty object as default. Something like that. And then I have my endpoint, const endpoint. And this is the GraphQL API that I told you about that I found, and it should be free to use. Yeah, and of course I need to have a fat arrow here also. So the endpoint is going to be HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash countries dot Trevor blade dot com. I guess that's the guy that created this GraphQL API. So there's our endpoint and use query in React query wants a function for fetching the data. So we create a function const fetch data. And this one is going to be an async one because we're fetching from the API. So I await the data and then I use request. That's the one that I imported here from the GraphQL request library. So that's the only thing that we're going to use here because it will make it so simple for us. Otherwise, we have to specify our GraphQL queries in a, in a much different way and also create the, the request and the header and the body ourselves. All right, so request, it, uh, it wants the endpoint, then it wants the query itself, and then it wants the variables. But in this case, we don't have any variables, so we don't need to specify it, but it's in that order for that function, the endpoint, the query, and the variables. All right. So that's our fetch function. And then we're going to return use query. That's the one from the React query library. So we simply, or I probably shouldn't say simply, because if you're looking at this, you probably don't know how to do it. And I don't want to say that it's simple because stuff like this can be quite complex. And the use query wants the key and the function, the fetch function, and the config, if we have any config. So this will just pass along an empty object if we don't set the config ourselves. So that's basically our hook. We're going to modify it a little bit more later. But first, I'm going to show you how this works. So I go back to my app.js file, and I need to import this custom hook. So import use gql query from 
dot forward slash use GQL query. All right, and now we can use our hook. So down below here in the app component, I'm gonna mark it with fetch data from custom hook that uses React query. So we have a const. I'm gonna destructure out the data is loading and error. And this is all React query stuff here. And as I told you before, I have a video on this in my channel. If you don't recognize this, this video is very much about explaining how to use GraphQL with React query. So I'm not gonna explain everything with React query. All right, then I use my hook, use GQL query like this. And I give it the key of countries, a regular string, and then I want to give it the query, uh, and that's the one that's called get underscore countries. That's the one that we created up here without the variable. I'm going to remove the sidebar. So you can see it here. We don't have a variable for this one. So get countries. And that's everything we need to specify for this one. And hopefully we have something here. So console log data. I'm gonna save the file, go back to the browser, and we have some error. All right, type error object is not a function. What did I do wrong here? Yeah, I forgot an S here. I usually do that in my tutorials. I forgot an S. This should be countries.travelblades.com. Save it, go back to the browser, and you can see, I'm gonna reload it just to be sure, that I have my countries here. So that's nice, we know that it's working. We're successfully grabbing data from a GraphQL API with React Query. And we can also do some nice little stuff here. Instead of this one here, I'm gonna return. I have parentheses. Uh, I can have a wrapper div for this one. And I enter JavaScript land and data.countries.map. I have a country. I have an inline error function, and I'm going to return a div with a key of the country dot name, and then I type out the country dot name like this. Do some order formatting and save it. Also, we can do some stuff here because you have this is loading flag. That's a boolean and error. So if is loading return div loading like this and if error return another div something went wrong like this save it go back to the browser you can see that we have our countries here so it's working and that's sweet and you can see that it displays loading when it's loading from the api so my friends, this one is actually a fetching data from a GraphQL API now, and we're using the awesome library that's called React Query. You don't need to use Apollo or, or um, Relay or something if you don't want to use that. Apollo has been the go-to standard for this in a very long time, but there are libraries now that can handle this for you, and this is a good example of that. And this is only one way of doing it. You can do it in other ways also, of course, as always with code. There is one more thing that I want to show you, and that is how we use variables also in our queries. So for example, here, we don't specify any variables here now for this use, query, use GQL query, the custom hook. So I'm gonna do that also. And we specify them after here in an object. So I want to set the code to SE, that's for Sweden. And that's how the GraphQL API works. You specify the code and then you can grab a country with that code. Then I also have to change some stuff inside of my custom hook. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I go back to the use GQL query. And also I want to show you here, if you, for example, have an endpoint that needs authorization, so you need to send along a token, you can create your headers here, const headers equal, and we set the headers like this. 
authorization. And then you're probably going to have a bearer. Don't know if I pronounced that exactly correct also. I may have said the drink, beer, or, or the bear, uh, like the animal. I don't know, but it's a bearer. And then the uh, token goes here. So you can parse in your token here. So that is the headers that you're going to use. And then for this one, if you want to send along a token, and if you want to use variables, we need to create the GraphQL client from the GraphQL request library. So const GraphQL client equals new GraphQL client. And that's the one, of course, that I imported up here. So the only difference in the naming here, I spelled it with a lowercase g, and it's a capital G here. I could have named it to whatever I want, of course. And this GraphQL client needs the endpoint and also the headers. So this is how you create the client that always going to provide a token for your API. All right, and then I have to change some small stuff here. We have the fetch data. I can actually, I'm going to comment this one out and I create a new one. So const fetch data equals an async function again. And I await. And this time I'm going to await from the GraphQL client that I created here. I'm going to call the request from that one and I send along the query and the variables like this. So this is how we can also include the variables in our query. You create the GraphQL client with the new keyword and the GraphQL client. You give it the endpoint. And in this case, also are provided the headers. We don't need it because we don't need to provide a token in this case to this GraphQL API. But it can be good to know because that's a common use case. You want to provide a token to be able to use the API. So that's what you do here. That GraphQL client will always provide this header with the, the authorization and stuff like that. The everything that you want to send along, it will also attach that to the request. So that's why you create this GraphQL client. And you give it the query. And also when you provide the variables, this GraphQL client will make sure that those variables are sent into the GraphQL query itself. And that's also a lot easier than creating this functionality yourself. All right, so I go back to, no, I have to change my query in the app.js also, because this one is the get countries. And we should have the singular one, get country. And also, I'm not going to be able to map through stuff here then. So I comment this one out, and I can type country. And first, we can console log out the data, see what we got. So we have the country here, you can see in my console, and the name. So I can just do something like this country and from the data dot country dot name hopefully yeah country sweden so you can see we successfully send along a variable to our graphql query and there's not many rows of code here either you can see so i think this is a super smooth way of doing stuff and we're actually trying this one out now with my client we are changing out the apollo because we're not using all that functionality in apollo i think Apollo has a great cache function, but we're not using that one. So we're going to try out React Query exactly the same way as I show you here. So I have created a custom hook for my client, and I also used the GraphQL request for that one. All right, I hope this gave you some insight into using React Query with GraphQL. And you can see that GraphQL is nothing fancy, really. It's just a string in your body in your request to the endpoint. So it's just the same. You just have to parse it in there in a little bit more complicated way than to a REST API maybe. But that's what the library GraphQL request is for. It's going to help you with that. So hope you liked this one. Please make sure to subscribe on my channel to support me. I would love your support and I want to get more followers so I can create more videos like this. See you in another one.